The Russian Defense Ministry said that Russia destroyed a large stockpile containing military equipment of the U.S. and European countries. Meanwhile, the United Nations Security Council approved for the first time a statement in favor of a peaceful solution in Ukraine. On May 7, the Russian Defense Ministry said that Russia destroyed a large stockpile containing military equipment of the United States and European countries near the Bohodrukov railway station in the Kharkiv region of Ukraine. In addition, they attacked 18 Ukrainian military facilities overnight, including three ammunition depots in Dokhny, near the port city of Odessa. In a video posted late on May 6, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky said that he was making diplomatic efforts to save the lives of suicide soldiers inside the Azovstal steel plant in the city of Mariupol. These soldiers refused to surrender, although their number is unknown. The Ukrainian side was worried that Russian forces could wipe them out on May 9, the anniversary of the victory over fascism. Ukraine's Deputy Prime Minister Irina Vershchuk announced the latest prisoner exchange between Kiev and Moscow, according to the Guardian newspaper on May 7. Accordingly, the Ukrainian side was returned 41 people, including 28 soldiers and 11 women. Ms. Vershchuk did not disclose the number of people on the Russian side. G7 leaders, including U.S. President Joe Biden, will hold a video call with Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky on May 8 to show solidarity ahead of Victory Day, May 9, commemorating the 77th anniversary year of defeating Nazi Germany. The British government announced that it will send Ukraine 287 portable generators, enough to provide electricity for nearly 8,000 households. The funds will be used for hospitals shelters and other essential services in eastern Ukraine, Reuters news agency reported on May 7. The UK will also relax regulations on supporting fossil fuels abroad to boost energy supplies to Ukraine. On May 7, the Russian foreign ministry summoned the British ambassador to Russia to strongly protest the new British sanctions against Russian media. The ministry said it would continue to respond strongly and decisively to all measures imposed by the UK. U.S. First Lady Jill Biden arrived in Eastern Europe on May 6 for a four-day trip to reaffirm America's commitment to support Ukraine. According to The Guardian, Biden is expected to meet with leaders of countries and U.S. troops, as well as Ukrainian parents and children fleeing in Romania and Slovakia. With a support package of $150 million for Ukraine announced on May 6, the amount that President Biden has the full right to use to support Kiev without passing Congress is only about $100 million. A senior U.S. official said the new support package includes 25,000 rounds for 155mm howitzers, radar to identify enemy artillery, electronic jammers and some spare parts. Congress urgently needs to provide the funding requested to strengthen Ukraine on the battlefield and at the negotiating table. Biden said in an appeal on May 6. Earlier, the White House asked Congress to approve a huge aid package of 33 billion US dollars for Ukraine within 5 months, including 20 billion US dollars in military on May 6. For the first time since the outbreak of conflict in Ukraine, the United Nations Security Council adopted a statement in favor of a peaceful solution. The statement, drawn up by Norway and Mexico, was approved by all 15 members of the United Nations Security Council, including Russia, and confirmed the support for the UN Secretary General's efforts at Rec United Nations Antonio Guterres. In a later statement, Guterres expressed his joy and described this as the first time the Security Council speaks with one voice for peace in Ukraine, according to Reuters news agency. In an interview published by the Washington Post on May 7, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky stated that peace talks with Russia will begin only after Moscow withdraws from all territories that the country this is controlled from after 20. The Ukrainian leader stressed that he had hoped for a diplomatic solution but that Kiev would stick to its preconditions. On May 6, about 50 civilians including women, 
children and elderly people were evacuated from bunkers under the besieged Azovstal steel plant in the city of Mariupol. Tomorrow morning we will continue the evacuation operation, Deputy Prime Minister of Ukraine Irina Verashuk told the New York Times late on May 6 local time. Fearing a new wave of Russian attacks on the anniversary of the victory over fascism 9-5, Kiev Mayor Vitaly Klitschko urged Ukrainians to stay indoors for two days May 8 and 9. In the coming days, there is a high probability of missile strikes in all regions of Ukraine. Be aware and take care of your own safety, Klitschko called on June 6, 5 and left open the possibility of imposing a curfew. In a statement on Telegram channel on May 6, Serhii Hayde, head of the Lugansk Regional Military Command, accused Russia of trying to control the city of Severodonetsk in the Donbass region. According to Mr. Hayday, if Severodonetsk is controlled, Russia will consider this a big and meaningful victory right before the 9-5 anniversary. Severodonetsk, an important industrial center in eastern Ukraine, has been shelled by Russian artillery for weeks, destroying much of its infrastructure. However, Ukrainian troops remained in and around the city. On May 6, Italian authorities confirmed the seizure of the Scheherazade, a luxury yacht worth $700 million that may have been owned by Russian President Vlad. Scheherazade has two helipads and can accommodate up to 18 guests and a crew of 40. Its owner has never been identified, but there have been many rumors claiming it belonged to Mr. Putin or someone in his circle.